Hi, I'm Buddy Davis. Welcome to my show, Amazing Adventures. I am an adventure explorer, dinosaur sculptor, singer, songwriter, and I want you to join me as we explore God's amazing creation. Glad you're here. We're on our way to the great state of Montana and we're going to be looking for real dinosaur bones. Some people will ask me, hey buddy, what exactly is a dinosaur anyway? A little bit confused about that. A lot of people think that dinosaurs would be like pterodactyls. Nope, that's not a dinosaur. They're flyers. Some people think that a dinosaur is like a plesiosaur. Nope, they're swimmers. Dinosaurs were land animals and they didn't walk sprawl-legged with their legs like how a lizard or a crocodile will walk. Dinosaurs walk with their legs directly underneath their bodies. And the word dinosaur, it's a brand new word as well. It wasn't even invented until the year 1841 by a man by the name of Sir Richard Owen. And that word dinosaur means terrible lizard. So we're gonna look for some terrible lizards, triceratops to be exact. So I'm gonna pack my trusty whip right now and I think that we're ready to go. So come along with me to Montana and look for real dinosaur bones. Dinosaurs are found all over the world, including Antarctica, even as far north as Alaska. And we're going to go to the great state of Montana and the Badlands and we're going to look for a dinosaur that's called Triceratops, a superstar among dinosaurs. And I'm just inspecting our airplane here, our Piper Cub that's going to take us on this journey. So it's going to be fun. Hey, come on along. Here we are at Makoshika Park, and I wanted to stop here on the way to the dinosaur dig to show you what this land looked like. Now, before the flood, this would have all been filled in with ground, and the flood water washed all that sediment away, and what you see here, that's what's left. You can see a little bit of a river running right down to the bottom. This is a good place to look for dinosaur bones. Who knows what you could find, and in beside those rocks, you might find a big old T-Rex. Again, it could be a Triceratops. Could be one of the Hadasaurs, a lot of different varieties of Hadasaurs. This is just beautiful country. I thought you'd like to see it. Tell you what, we have an awesome God. And this, this is beautiful. Not only do you find Triceratops in these parts, you find one of the most famous dinosaurs of all, the superstar of all the dinosaurs, a mighty T-Rex. Dinosaur that weighed about, all oh, between six to seven tons when it was alive, about 40 feet long. A great big one had between 50 to 60 teeth in his head, found right here. And in fact, just, just, just a few months ago, we were walking on a trail right over this bluff with the team and almost stepped on a beautiful tooth of a T-Rex. Of course, we got it out of the ground, and right now it's being prepared at the Glendive Dinosaur Museum. Who knows what we're gonna find today? I mean, this is dinosaur country, and we're here. This is so exciting.
word fossil means dug up. That used to pertain to things like arrowheads and pottery. But anymore, when somebody digs these up, it's called an archaeologist. Today, when you dig these up, all diamonds and gold or rocks and minerals, these people are called geologists. Paleontologist, on the other hand, is the modern word that we use for somebody that digs up what we think of being as fossils. And uh, a fossil would be a once living plant or parts of it or an animal that has been replaced by natural processes, usually by sand, mud, and laid down by water. We like to think of billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. So a paleontologist would study the fossils, such as this Camptosaurus dinosaur head, and I would work with that scientist, and we'd try to figure out what this animal might look like when it would be alive. That's where my job comes in, because I'm a paleo artist. And I take things like this piece of foam right here, and I start to carve on it, and eventually I get it to look something like a dinosaur. To try to make it look as real as what I can make it look. And that's what you'll see in the museums on a lot of displays. Boy, sometimes you gotta climb some crazy hills to find what you're looking for. That cave back in there. Those types of caves can be real dangerous and you never want to go in them because they can fall. That's a good den for snakes, <laughs> for rattlesnakes. That wouldn't be too exciting. Oh, it'd be exciting, but we don't want to see any rattlesnakes. Not today. I made it. Right over there is where we're headed. Wow. Well, here we are. This is where Triceratops lays. Here's a team that's working right now digging out the bones of Triceratops. Very carefully working with screwdrivers, with paintbrushes. You gotta be so careful that you don't damage the bone. And as we find the bones, we're gonna very carefully pull them out. Some of them we might even have to plaster jacket so we can take them back to the museum. There we'll prepare them even more. But I want you guys to see what's happening. So come right along with me, come on. One of the first things we have to do is remove the overburden. As we do this, we sift through the pieces. Might find a fish scale, might find part of a tooth, uh, might find a dinosaur bone. Then we glue that back together, wrap it up in tin foil, take it back to the lab to try to find out exactly what we found. Well, let's talk about trace fossils. A trace fossil would be like a dinosaur track or a trackway. This is a track that I helped to uncover in uh, Texas. And I took a mold of it and it shows that there's been a dinosaur that walked through this area. You can learn a lot from trace fossils. It used to be when I was a little boy and go to school, when we'd draw pictures of dinosaurs, if we'd see them in our science books, it showed the big dinosaurs dragging their tails along. But you know what? When you find the footprints of dinosaurs, you don't find that tail drag. So that's caused the paleontologists, the scientists who study the fossils, to think that dinosaurs probably walked holding their tails out like this for balance. They're probably right about that. Yep, you can learn a lot by studying trace fossils. We're walking up through here. We're going to try to find what's called floaters. It's little pieces of dinosaur bones that will be coming out, out of this big old bluff right here. And we're going to trace that back and see if we can find where these bones possibly should be coming out of. So, keep your eyes peeled, look close to the ground with me, and we'll see if we can find some dinosaur bones. This is what we're looking for right here. These are small pieces of bones called floaters. That's what the scientists call them. Just little fragments of dinosaur bones is coming out of this bluff. So what you do, as you follow, you try to trace, you can see it's going right up through here. There's another one. There's some pieces right here that's going up. And you follow these little floaters. And eventually you find where that dinosaur is coming out of this bluff. So let's just walk right up here. Here we are. There's the bigger part of the bone. This is probably going to be a shoulder blade. 
Might be part of the pelvis, you don't know yet, but it's all broken apart, so what this has got to be, you have to dig this out very carefully. Then back at the museum, we'll glue all these pieces together, figure out for sure what it is. But this is definitely dinosaur bone. And what we need to do in some future date is bring the team right here to this site and remove all this. Who knows what we'll find in here? But this is really good. You know, most times when you find dinosaur bones, you don't find a complete skeleton laying on the ground like you see in the movies. Nope, not that way at all. Most times, this is what you do find, pieces of bone. And where the science work comes in is trying to figure out exactly what kind of dinosaur it is. So once this bone's all put together, we'll use what's called comparative analysis. We'll take that bone, we'll compare it with other, with other dinosaurs, and it'll match up. And that's how you can tell what type of dinosaur that you've actually found. This is really good. This is exciting stuff right here. Uh -huh.